right, who's ready for 10 things no one else will tell you about social media today? There's a lot of qualifiers. You may already know all this information, you probably do, I like common sense, but not all of us have it, so that's what this presentation is partly about. And I'll be honest, this started out as a presentation called 10 Things No One Else Will Tell You About Twitter Today. It can be very functional, you could have actually used this information in some capacity. But as I was writing up the, uh, the 10 things, I realized so many of them apply so broadly to social media in general, it was, it was criminal to just limit it to Twitter. Also, it lets me rant a little more. So, uh, we're about to talk about 10 things that you probably should know, but don't. Social media is for narcissists. Uh, this needs to be made very clear. Nobody in their right mind makes anything and puts it online without thinking, this needs to be seen. Someone needs to know what I'm thinking and feeling at this exact moment. I took the time to make this video, write this blog post, think this thought. People should thank me for it. They should not only be appreciative of the time it took me to make it, but they should tell me how good it is and then tell other people about it so others think that I'm valid in some capacity. So, I mean, there's a very base need here when you're getting involved in social media, and that is you want love. And it's not just love, it's unconditional love. <laughs> except, there, except there are conditions, like you want a lot of it, and you want it repeatedly, and you want it to never stop, and you want it to grow until the whole world knows your name, and or is paying you for it, right? Uh, I should also make a note here, by the way, all the images that you see, uh, that's not me, but all the images that you see are uh, under Creative Commons license from Flickr. Yeah, so uh, this photograph was taken either of this guy or by this guy because he wanted all of us to see it and tagged it narcissist on Flickr. <laughs> so so he, he, he's welcome right now, you're welcome. Just jump in there. So, yeah, nobody really goes online and thinks, well, I have a valid thought, but I don't really care if anybody reads it. I, I want to go through the process of spending 20 minutes to write this blog post that I hope nobody sees, just to think it through. You know, you don't do that. That's why you have journals. Okay? If you're going to put your journal online, the, the supposition there is that you want at least one other person to like it enough to validate you. So that's where we're all coming from here. We wouldn't have put on a pod camp if we didn't want to validate the work that we're doing every day. You know, if I said, well, I don't really care when it comes to a podcast, I wouldn't have made it free. So, <laughs> social media is addictive. Uh, this is the top of my Twitter account. As you can see, I have tweeted here at the bottom 14,083 times. I thought I had something you needed to know. 14,000 times in the past three years. I have no way of knowing if that was true. But I'll tell you what happens is sometimes I say something on Twitter and somebody else retweets it. And a little light bulb goes off, and I say, oh, I got one. Somebody liked that. And then I say something else, and nobody retweets it, and I'm like, oh, okay, I missed the boat on that one. So i got to go back to what worked before. Why? It's not because I really want to give you any value. It's because I want you to value me. So when I realize what's working, when I realize what people are talking about more often, when I realize, you know, people like this content but not that, it inspires me to give you more of what you want so you love me more. That makes it very addictive because... This is me speaking personally, I'm a freelancer, which means I don't really have a job. Which means I sit around all day, and if I'm not doing anything to pay the bills, I can tweet all day long, as you see here. And if you keep validating me by repeating it, I'll keep doing it. So what ends up happening is I will spend two or three hours at a time just sitting there talking about things in the hopes that you will talk back to me about it. What the hell is wrong with me? Okay. Social media is addictive and it's narcissistic. These are not necessarily positive things, but hey, they've turned this into a profitable industry for some people, so well done. That said, there is no wrong way to do social media. Chris Brogan, our patron saint of PodCamp, has said this numerous times and even blogged it here, you're doing it wrong, is a common misconception about social media. If we accept the first two premises to be true, that it's for narcissists and it's addictive, let's throw that out for right now. Apart from that, there's nothing else wrong about it. You can do it any way you want. You can talk about yourself, you can talk about other people, you can talk about things you're doing, you can make things, share things, force people to watch things. Anything you're doing, it's totally valid because social media really has no rules. People like to say, well, here's like the 10 rules of Twitter. That's a lie. 
There's no rule that says you have to tweet this way. There's nothing that says you shouldn't tweet 14,000 times in three years. There's nothing that says that you should tweet more or less, or that you should blog five times a week, or seven times a week, or once a day. Chris Brogan occasionally puts up five posts in a day, and then you don't hear from him for a while. Is he doing it wrong? Well, it depends on your point of view, but clearly it's worked for him. So don't worry so much if you're creating social media about what people are telling you is right or wrong about your process. Everybody has an opinion. That's why we all have a blog, okay? Just because you think that I'm right or wrong doesn't mean anything. If somebody's willing to pay me, I'm probably right. So <laughs> keeping that in mind, uh, you'll also notice there's an asterisk on this slide. There's no wrong way to do social media asterisk. There are some wrong ways, and I'll get to those. Uh, what I didn't tell you, it, the 11th thing nobody tells you about social media is we're all hypocrites. So keep that in mind. <laughs> social media is not social marketing. Uh, this is a bone of contention for myself and many other people, but it comes across wrong when I say it. So I figured I'd say it and put a big pink background behind it. Uh, when you're making social media, you're making content. You are producing something. When you are doing social marketing, you are promoting something, and there is a difference. A lot of people like to say, oh, well, my, you know, my, um, my marketing agency, we do social media. If you're not actually creating anything, you're not really doing social media. What you are is you're promoting a product using social media channels. It's a, it's a semantics game in a way, but I think there needs to be a distinction because there are people who like to create content and they want to, you know, for example, PodCamp was created so we content creators could teach each other how we're doing what we're doing. Then the big question all the time was, how do you monetize? How do you monetize? How do you make, do you make a living? Do you make, why, why would you do this if you don't make a living? What's the point? So that's how it all started. Suddenly the money started to come in and it came in primarily from the marketers. Thank you to the marketers. We appreciate it. But just because I'm trying to sell you a, a, you know, a vase or a paper plate or a car or my own validity on social media, uh, it does not mean that I'm producing a piece of media. So I think that it, it it does the industry a disservice to not disseminate between, or not, not separate between media and marketing. And this becomes very important as we go through this presentation because social media is for suckers. Um, I guess that means you, just, just so you know. Uh, social media is so easy to do that people who want to use it for all the wrong reasons can learn how to do it very quickly and then take advantage of you uh, they can take advantage of you using social media tools in a variety of ways. Uh, it's happened to all of us, whether we know it or not, and uh, I continually find new ways in which I'm being taken advantage of by social media or by people who are using these tools in the wrong way. Uh, this image that you see of me, by the way, some of you, very few of you, may recognize this as the background image from a new uh, blog that I've started called Marketing Douchebags. <laughs> so I'm a marketer and a content creator. And I like to think I'm one of the white hat guys, not in this picture, but I like to think that I'm one of the guys who's out there and doing it what I think is the right way, or at the very least a non-objectionable way. So as you look around online, you start to find people who maybe you're doing it what you think might be a wrong way. And by wrong, I mean borderline illegal or probably uh, you know, coercing people into doing things they don't realize they're being coerced into doing. Uh, we like to call those the black hat marketers, or in my short term, Phenology, douchebags. And I've come across so many of them recently on Twitter, on blogs, on YouTube, on Facebook, and I'm alarmed by like every social media, every, every yeah, email, email had spammers, that's fine. It's grown so fast and it continues to grow at such a rate in social media that eventually Twitter will be nothing but spam if we don't do something about it. That's my concern. I wouldn't be concerned if I didn't think there was some validity to these tools in the first place. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think that misusing them was somehow cheapening the industry and ruining it for the rest of us who want to make, you know, not just a living at it, but want, want to have a valuable conversation as a result of it. So when I start to notice people who are doing things that I personally disagree with, again, it's my opinion, I will out them on a blog called Marketing Douchebags. Now keep this in mind, because it comes up again a little bit later. Uh, but again, it's just my opinion that I think that what you're doing might not be the nicest thing in the world. Uh, one of the things that you'll see a lot in Twitter is spam, where they try to get you to click through a particularly incendiary headline, you know, something that they've purposely crafted, like, you know, free girls click now, something like that, <laughs> that's meant to add value to your day, but when you click, it's not free girls at all, it's a pyramid scheme. I didn't want a pyramid scheme, I wanted nudity at work. So I feel like I've been misled. That shouldn't have happened. So 
when you get into those situations, if you don't call them out, they just proliferate because what happens is if I clicked on it and didn't call it a bad thing, somebody on the other end of that clicks it, uh-huh, we got one, someone clicked on it. And it's, they're doing the same thing I'm doing, so they're not narcissists, they're robots, they can do this until we all die. So, social media makes plagiarizing easy. <laughs> So a funny thing happened. I installed uh, the WordPress uh, spam catcher called Akismet, right? And it basically nabs anything that it thinks might be a spam comment on my blog. I started to notice that my blog posts were being reposted on other blog sites, but without my name. In fact, other people would usually attach their name to it and say they wrote it. Why? Because it's easy to write a script that will scrape your blog's content and repost it give somebody else your credibility, your insight, and then they get the credit for it. I thought that was wrong. In fact, I outed this particular gentleman, who we'll call Joel Goldstein, because that's his name. <laughs> um, <laughs> on the left, you'll see something called The Audacity of Free, written by Chris Brogan on October, and it's a little blurry there, I believe that was October 2nd. The day after, someone named Joel Goldstein had this blog post called The Audacity of Free, which has the exact same graphic, the exact same verbiage. Uh, in fact, and again, it's a little uh, blurry, uh, but it talks, in Chris's first person point of view there on the left, he's saying things like, I'm running the inbound marketing summit in a few days. Well, what's funny is when Joel Goldstein scrapes this and puts it on his blog, but doesn't attribute it to Chris, it looks like Joel Goldstein's running this thing called the Inbound Marketing Summit. So it's little tricks like this that unscrupulous bastards can use to make themselves look like they know what they're talking about. I went through a little bit of investigation of Mr. Joel Goldstein and found a lot of interesting things, like he's a realtor, and he has a LinkedIn profile with about six connections, yet he passes himself off as a social media expert. I don't know that being a realtor with six connections makes you a social media expert, much less somebody who can allow himself to uh, you know, host the Inbound Marketing Summit. There was another blog post. The only reason I found this, by the way, is because Chris Brogan had linked to me in his Audacity of Free post. I, that came up on my spam filter as a trackback, which is anytime somebody links to you in, in their blog, you know, it'll, it'll pull up the connection to you or so you know who is citing you. It's there so you'll be like pleased when people cite you. Unintentionally, I was displeased that this douchebag was citing me. So the fact that he actually pulled the content but kept all the syntax intact, kept all the links intact, and yet there are no other links in this post to Chris Brogan. You, I could not find any other way to get back to Chris's blog from Joel Goldstein's. So again, I, it's a dead end that makes you think that Joel is some you know, wonderful individual when he's clearly, clearly a spineless bastard. And I can say that right now. I'm saying that to you, Cameron. And I'm also saying that because it's a fact, all right? Because uh, there's a funny thing about defamation that we'll get to in a second. Social media can get you sued. What you're looking at right here is the uh, wraparound of the law offices of Peter D. Cole from Los Angeles. Dear Mr. Brown, Danny Brown is a, uh, a marketing expert who actually has a real job. He's a marketer, and he, uh, I believe, currently lives in Canada. But he wrote about something he found to be particularly troubling. We all know the actor, well, most of us know the actor, uh, Owen Wilson, uh, unfortunately tried to commit suicide a little while ago, and thankfully did not succeed. Um, but apparently he wears a Rolex watch very often. There is a jeweler, I believe they're listed here, right? Melrose Jewelers, who is a jewelry reseller, whatever that means. And they put out a press release that said, in essence, Clearly, when Owen Wilson looked at his Rolex watch, he realized the quality of that watch matched the quality of his life. Rolex saved Owen Wilson's life. P.S. We sell Rolex watches. <laughs> There's a lot wrong with that that I'm not going to get into because Danny Brown already did and then got uh, almost sued for it. And I say almost because as you see here, here's Peter D. Cole, the attorney for Melrose Jewelers, decided that what Danny Brown wrote was defamation that he had said something that could not be proven as a fact. It was just meant to hurt the uh, apparently sterling reputation of Melrose Jewelers uh, jewelry resellers. Danny decided that he was completely within his rights to have said it, and in fact, not only stated it again and posted this online so we could all download it, <laughs> but uh, he went point by point and refuted every one of their arguments against him. And what do you think happened to Mr. Danny Brown? Nothing. 
he called their bluff. Peter D. Cole was like, oh shit, you know what? Well, A, first of all, Peter D. Cole didn't even actually send any letterhead. Danny Brown had to go and Google this to get this information. I don't think this guy's actually a lawyer. He's probably working out of a garage. But they attempted to frighten him into taking down something that he was well within his rights to have said. Because in social media, you can say anything you want to about anybody. But if you want to call their bluff, you can always try and get them to take something down. In this case, it didn't work out because Mr. Brown left his post up. It's still there for anybody to see. This letter is still there for anybody to see. And the Google trail makes it very clear because other people went and helped him out then and found other press releases where Merrill's jewelers had also lied or misrepresented. There was something there about Lance Armstrong's, like, you know, fight through cancer thanks to Rolex and things like this. So clearly, <laughs> a funny thing happens when you try and sue someone for defamation. They start to pay attention to you, the person trying to litigate. So let's say, you know, Melrose Jewelers hadn't tried to sue. No one would really have noticed this happened. But when you try to sue somebody, and the person being sued makes it a case, and they decide to say, no, we're going to leave this up, more people saw all of this information after this letter was sent than they ever would have before. So a lesson learned, I think, by Melrose Jewelers is to stop suing people. They're not going to be honest anymore, but at least they might try and stop suing people for telling the truth. I mention this specifically because yours truly has managed to avoid being sued for the first time, but it won't be the last, I'm sure. Uh, because this past week, uh, do we have a, uh, I posted a thing on the Marketing Douchebags blog about uh, an organization here in Pittsburgh that some of you may have heard of, the Pittsburgh Business Builders. Who here is representing the Pittsburgh Business Builders? Hmm, interesting. So they don't know a whole lot about social media. Okay, that's fine. Because uh, I ended up on their email list where they said, hey, you're a, you're a Pittsburgh entrepreneur. Come out and join us. We meet at different coffee shops around the city, and we, we teach each other about entrepreneurship. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I don't live in Pittsburgh, but people I know do. So I forwarded this on Twitter. And not very long afterwards, uh, Miss Jamie Broom was sitting in the back of the room back there. Uh, wait, stand up, Jamie. Thank you, because. <laughs> No, 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 Jamie didn't do anything wrong. What Jamie did was go to their goddamn website, right? So she goes to the Pittsburgh Business Builders website and she's curious, who are these people? Wouldn't you be curious if you had a team of entrepreneurs running around you'd never heard of before, but you yourself were an entrepreneur? It seems, it seems weird, that happens, but it seems weird. She looked at their board of directors. Something didn't seem to add up about it. And that's the last thing I was legally allowed to say about it on my blog because the following paragraphs had to be taken down by threat of defamation lawsuit from someone named Andrew J. Cass. If you go back to my website, you can find Mr. Cass's website, and you can learn a lot more about him than anything I would ever post. It's entirely up to you what you make of this. Uh, I'm sure he's a fine, upstanding individual. In fact, I even said in his, the original blog post, I'm sure all of his uh, businesses will make you a millionaire. <laughs> all of them will. I'm sure of it. So go and do your due diligence. Uh, you know. But the point is, you can say something about somebody, it can even be factual, and you can still be threatened into taking it down. Because the other thing that I learned is uh, defamation cases are a bitch, because even if you win, you've got to pay to defend yourself in court. And I was this close to saying, well, you know what, I believe that what I wrote is either going to be defensible as truth or opinion, so I'm just going to leave it up and roll the dice and see what happens. And then I did a little extra Googling on uh, this particular gentleman and realized that I couldn't find one negative piece of information about him anywhere on the internet at all, period. And I was like, well, either he's Jesus or, <laughs> and even Jesus you can find negative things about, but either he's Jesus or he is the most skilled litigator in the history of America. So I decided, based upon both that fact and the fact that he has many pictures of him driving expensive cars on his website, he probably has more money than I do. So even if I'm right, he can outsue me. So the point is, I'm willing to take down information that keeps me out of the poorhouse while putting up completely factual information that will stand. I'm looking at you, camera. You know who you are. All right, so social media can get you sued. Be careful about what you say. You can say anything you want to. You can also choose to go to jail over it. Uh, social media stinks of desperation. It stinks of it. <laughs> this goes back to point number one. We're all narcissists, right? We all want to be loved indefinitely. But we want so much to be loved that there is a very, um, there's an unspoken truth amongst all of us who create social media, and that is I am tolerating you only because I hope you'll talk about me. <laughs> 
you know, I'm happy to pass along the information that you sent me because if I think it's valid, it's not just that people will enjoy what I've passed along, but they'll think I'm valid for passing it along. It's a very weird value exchange that goes on amongst social media people because at the end of the day, if all of us started doing this because we want to be known and recognized and loved and possibly paid, it stands to reason that the longer I'm talking to you, the less somebody else is talking about me. So, everybody who organized PodCamp this weekend should have been talking about themselves instead. However, I'm up here doing it for an hour. There's your real lesson, okay? But, I say this also because social media sucks. Justine's not here. Oh, I heard a groan. I already heard a groan from the audience. This is interesting. So, I'm gonna say this as an example. First of all, social media sucks because you have somebody like Justine, or Chris Brogan, depending on you know, who you'd like to speak about. Here's Justine's website. Justine is a girl from Pittsburgh who uh, got inexplicably famous, has gone off to Hollywood and become a star. End of story, in theory. What she also has are two very dedicated camps of people. There's a much larger group called the I, Justine Fan Club. Not formally, but basically it's a lot of people who would just love to touch her. And then <laughs> there is the smaller but very vocal minority of people who think that she's a completely worthless human being. Most people fall somewhere in between that camp, but those are the two extremes. What's funny about it is people can knock someone like Justine all they want, or they can call Chris Brogan a charlatan for some of the things that he says or does, or the ways they make value judgments about somebody. But the funny thing is, the only reason we know that Justine or Chris Brogan exist is not because they woke up one day and put up a blog post. It's not because Justine put on some makeup one day and made a video and became an overnight sensation. It's because they do this day after day. You might not think there's any actual worth or value in the media that Justine or Chris Brogan or I or anybody else in this room create, but the fact that you know any of us at all means that what we're doing is working in some capacity, and it's literally working. We're getting up every day because this is our job. It's weird. Our job is to be ourselves. Our job is to produce. This is the first time in history, I think, that you can actually make a living just by being you. So in this case, Justine makes a living because she is herself. She's not trying to put on an act. Weirdly enough, if you've met her, you know this to be true. Nothing that she's doing is really inauthentic. So she's getting up every day and not just putting on makeup and walking out the door, but she's thinking about video. She's shooting video. She's importing it to her computer. She's editing it. She's re-editing it. She's making sure that it actually works, testing it. Maybe I'm people watch it. Okay, then you fix it. You put it online. You got to promote it, right? Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, everything else. Hope that your audience decides to promote it for you. Then it's lunch, okay? So you've had all, it's a big day. It's very important. You've done a lot of work just being Justine in the morning, right? And all it takes is one person to log on and go, OMG, this sucks, you fucking talentless whore, you know. And then you, your day is blown because the amount of effort that you put into your day was completely negated by one person, one 14-year-old guy who took the day off from school, watched a video, and put a troll-like comment. So the fact that anybody actually succeeds in social media is kind of baffling because it's so easy to be torn down. It's so easy to have your work stolen from you. It's so easy for negative sentiment to build up because there's nothing stopping it. Social media, it, we, it is what we make of it. So the fact that anybody succeeds means they've worked their ass off to get there. And if you know anything about work, you know that work generally sucks. You know that when you wake up every day and your job is to be you, eventually you come to hate even that job in some capacity. And there are days that we as bloggers or podcasters or personalities or what have you, grow very weary of having to beat our own drum every day. But if we stop, you know what? Somebody else beats their drum louder and we get drowned out. So all of a sudden, being you not only became the first time in history you could get paid for being you, it became your non-stop, never-ending, full-time job. So when you get into social media, all of you narcissists, realize it does not end. It's addictive because it has to be. If you stop talking about yourself, you lose. Here, here. That's it, we're all in it together. <laughs> and we're in it together because there's this weird paradox. If I stop talking about myself, I lose but I have to have something else to talk about or else you think that I am a marketing douchebag. So you've got to split the difference. You've got to talk about other people that you do find value in. You've got to share the information that means something to you because if I don't share the information, nobody blogs and podcasts they don't know how to do it. So when you think about it, yes, the end result is I want to be successful. You want to be successful. All of us who are doing this, ideally for a living, want to be successful at it. But just think about what goes, you know, here's this, there we go. Think about what's involved in Justine, for example, having become who she is. So yes, there's all the technical aspects I said. She wakes up, does her thing, does the video, puts it online, promotes it, and that's her part of the job. But it doesn't end there because the job is then picked up voluntarily by those of us 
who pass her information along for her, right? So anybody who is marketing Justine on behalf of Justine is unwittingly working for her success. But in order for them to have done that, they have to know how to find the video. Do they like the video? You've got to compare and contrast amongst other videos. Which ones do you enjoy? Now that I like it, how do I share it? What is a video? What is a blog? The fact that any of us can succeed at all is not only amazing because we're fighting against negativity all the time, but it requires everybody to understand technology more and more in an in incrementally increasing way that benefits all of us in the end. If none of you knew what a blog was, you wouldn't be here today. You at least want to know what that is. By knowing what a blog is, you can now help me get rich and famous. So it's in my best interest to educate you so you can help me help me. Because I'm a narcissist. Thank you all for coming here and sitting through this, but keep this other thing in mind. So I've said a lot of negative, asinine, douchebaggish type things, right? And maybe a lot of you are sitting there thinking, oh, this guy's full of shit, and the rest of you are thinking, oh, yeah, that's kind of right. You know, and well, that's somebody who wasn't me said it. But if we stop doing this, think about the reverse. Think about what happens. If all of us tomorrow stopped doing social media, if we all woke up and said, you know what? I'm going to be a good person. I'm not going to talk about myself anymore because I don't matter. You do. Well, let's take it a step further. I'm not going to talk about you either because, you know, that, that aggrandizes you unnecessarily. I don't want people to think that you're important either. I mean, we should all just be, let's all just be socialists. Let's all just not matter. Everything's great. If we <laughs> stop talking about ourselves, who keeps talking? The people with the money. Those are corporations. We've heard that for centuries. The people who want to give a message to you are the ones who have the money to make it happen. Social media lets us talk about ourselves for free all the time. And as narcissistic as that is, as much of a negative as you hear about, you know, people who see Twitter for the first time and they think, hey, it's just a dude talking about having cereal. What's the point? <laughs> if that didn't happen, someone would be making that person go and see the Paranormal Activity movie. It's the fact that he was able to see a different message that stopped him from wasting money on a shitty film. So if we don't talk about ourselves, the bastards win anyway. You've got to pick and choose amongst yourselves. Which bastard do you want to win, you or the other guy? And that's why we're all in this together, so none of us win. Thank you. <laughs> Any, quest Any questions other than A, why I'm a douchebag, or B, why I haven't you learned how to use PowerPoint properly? Because those are the two things that are pretty obvious. Uh, question back up here. Well, I, honestly, in my, in my opinion, those are two very different matters. Yeah, they are. Yeah. But since you asked, and I have this microphone, I'll tell you what I think. And you're an artist. Uh, and I have an artist, yeah, exactly. This is more, you know, it's more air for me to breathe. Um, but honestly, it, it, these things, in some way, the AP thing had to happen. For those of you who haven't heard the full, the full question, first of all, what do I think of the AP now deciding they have to charge for all their content? Well, on one hand, as somebody who might be using AP content to make a point sometime, that sucks for me if I have to pay for it. On the other hand, if nobody's paying for AP content and it's so easy to rip it off endlessly, at some point nobody's going to be producing AP content. And since those are reporters who, in theory, are producing valid, you know, uh, researched information, these are, you know, the people we would like to call journalists without the word citizen in front of it. If all of that goes away, all we're left with is the amount of news that you yourself are able to generate within your own sphere of influence. And I don't know about you, but I'm not going to fly to Pakistan to report on a war. You know, I can't get into the oil fields to see if they're burning. I won't know anything that I don't already know or that you who's near me doesn't already know. So if the AP can stay in business by charging us incrementally for repurposing their stories for free on our blogs, congratulations. The other thing is if if they can stay in business doing it. First of all, they haven't really wowed me with their business sense over the years, as we've watched the newspaper industry catch itself on fire repeatedly on its way to the crashing, burning ground. The other thing about that, though, is the market will decide. If I can still find a way around it to do it for free, won't I? Probably. As far as the FTC uh, deciding that anybody who's getting freebies and blogging about it has to say they got a freebie and that's why they're blogging about it, I think that's a very legitimate concern because otherwise you've got a lot more marketing douchebags out there who are getting paid to talk up products they haven't ever used, won't ever use, have no real affinity for, but they're convincing you through their alleged authority that you should buy this product. That stinks of more than desperation, but I'm out of expletives for this you know, uh, procedure. So I'll just say that I think that there's got to be a, a high amount of transparency out there. If you're going to be taken seriously, people should be believing what you're saying and not feeling bad about having them jipped out of, of the truth in the end. So, my two cents.
you may differ. Blog about it if you don't. And then cite me. When you're done, please track back to me after you, you blog that. Uh, you know, you can plagiarize it if you want to, but I will find you, and then you'll sue me for defamation, and I'll take it down. And, I'm, I'm, and then, then we go. I'm busy, okay? Uh, other questions? Yes, right in the middle. Is, there, is your primary income through internet marketing, like affiliate marketing? <laughs> No, God, no, it's not, not through affiliate marketing. No, I, I, if I keep getting sued, it probably will have to become through affiliate marketing. Uh, no, what I actually do for a living, and this is why I think that I'm, you know, one of the alleged good guys. If you're going to make value judgments, is I help companies manage their social media campaigns. I either produce web video for them, I help manage their Twitter accounts, I help, you know, create content for their blogs, I help promote it. So I'm doing things that I think are benefiting the company because a, I would like to think that company is doing good work. And B, I'd like to realize there are people out there who don't know about these companies, but who would if the information was made available to them. Not all companies know how to do this internally. Not all companies can afford to do this internally or to hire somebody outright and have to pay, you know, nobody wants to pay for health insurance these days. So they contract a lot of it out. And so I, as a contractor, can help numerous companies all at once help get their message out there. Uh, you know, it benefits me, it benefits the company, it benefits you. And then honestly, if there's a company that approaches me that I don't think is a company I want to work with, as an independent, I'm allowed to say no. I'm allowed to say I don't really feel as though this is a thing that I would want to promote because if somebody promoted it to me, you would end up on the marketing douchebags blog. So I already have my own value system set. That's just me. So something. There was another hand. I saw a hand. No hands. Fabulous. I'm done in 40 minutes, and I can go drink. Uh, thank you all for uh, doing this, but I do want to leave you with, with one last note, I suppose. Um, and I was supposed to do a little the closing keynote about this of good and evil. I'm not trying to necessarily make value judgments about what is proper or improper. I, this is all an opinion. Obviously, it's an opinion. You can't sue me for an opinion. But what I'm saying you is, you if it's my opinion, I can sue you for <laughs> I will have my lawyer <laughs> get back to you. But what I am saying is this. So everybody walked into PodCamp hoping that they were going to be able to produce some sort of media or learn how to produce the media. And nobody's really thinking about, is this something I really should be doing, need to be doing, and am I doing it in any kind of a way that's ethical? Am I doing this in a way that people are not going to look at and go, oh, this is like morally appalling. Like, just because you can mass spam people on Twitter and Facebook, it doesn't make it right or positive. And I think those of us who would like to market ourselves online, whether it's you yourself, whether it's your product, somebody else's product, realize how you are being viewed by other people. Nobody stops and thinks about that in this equation. We're all so interested in talking about ourselves endlessly. Nobody stops and thinks, does everybody else out there think that I'm actually the most worthless person on the planet? Because if they do, they're not going to trust you. They're not going to believe you. They're not going to buy you. So be worthwhile. Be trustable. Be nice. Be Justine. And you will succeed. Thank you.